Hello and welcome to another video lecture from MrWatkins.com. Now this video lecture is going to focus on um, the senses and particularly the uh, receptor classifications. It's going to be a little different. I'm going to be looking at receptor classifications in, in a more general sense of, of their properties. Um, so we want to talk about a couple of things here before we get into um, any great depth, but um, if you have a sensor, say we're going to talk about touch here, and this uh, sensory receptor picks up the fact that your hand or finger um, has touched some object. So something has come and, and touched my hand, touched my finger here. And we have what's called a receptor field. So let me show you a picture here that I pulled out of a, another textbook. I'm going to try and zoom in a little bit here. So a receptor field. So if you, if you look here at this particular piece of this, this picture, we have uh, someone being touched here on the shoulder by a compass. We have two points of that compass then, and this is a blown up view, uh, touching the skin. There is this neuron, this sensory neuron, that's picking up this touch, this somatic sensor is picking up this touch. And what it's picking up, if you notice, we have our dendrites here in the skin, and these dendrites for this one neuron are very long. And so someone would say, if they got touched like this, hey, I'm only feeling one point that you're touching me at, even though you really are doing two, but because of the way this receptive field, this piece right here, is made in relationship to this neuron, that gives you the idea um, that you're only being touched by one piece. And notice here we're looking at the back. Now this other one on this side, we're touching the finger. Now it's going to be a little closer because in your hand, your touch receptors are a lot closer because you need that tactile uh, piece, that stimulation, knowing I'm holding a pen, I'm picking up a cup, those kind of things. And so if you notice here, my receptor fields are smaller. I have different neurons. There's their dendrites, but because the field is smaller, I'm stimulating two different neurons. Notice that there's not adjacent neurons in this case. They are neurons that have a neuron in between it. And so someone that's being touched here, they can feel uh, two points closer together because their receptor fields for these touch neurons are uh, smaller than, say, here on the back of the shoulder where you know, you don't really need to, to feel that distance. And there's a lab and things that we're going to do that deal with that. But let's kind of move on to uh, some more basic concepts here of how um, this piece or this idea of these receptors uh, work. And uh, so let me flip over here to the other page. I need to back this out real quick. Okay, and we'll flip over here to the next the next little page here, um, we're looking at some of these properties and I'm going to divide out receptors in a particular fashion here. I'm going to classify them. In another way, that's a little different than looking at their stimulus type. We have what's called somatic sensors or general sensors. And I'm going to use the word somatic sensor simply because it's a better way of describing these type of sensors. And these sensors um, we use to uh, feel with. These are uh, touch, pressure. You know, if someone squeezes your hand, you're feeling that pressure. This is pain. This is also can be described um, as temperature. So there is a, an external feature to this. Okay. Now the next type we're going to look at is chemical senses. And this is exactly what the name implies. Sensors pick up changes in the environment by which the sensor, the receptor, is found. So if someone sprays some perfume, you're going to be able to pick up that smell of that perfume because the chemicals in and around the nose have changed 
and that change then causes the olfactory cranial nerve number one to change uh, to send excuse me to send a signal because of the change back to an association area so it can be processed. Now your chemical sensors um, there's really two types that we're going to discuss and that's taste and that's smell. Those are the two types that we're going to discuss there. Um, now there's another type of sensor here uh, and I'm just going to divide it out here. It's, it's a special sense but sometimes we divide them out as hearing and equilibrium. Now remember there is a cranial nerve, the vestibular conchlear nerve, and this nerve um, divides into two, one going to the vestibula and the other one going to the cochlea and so the cochlea, excuse me, and so that picks up this auditory piece, but it also picks up a, a proprioception piece where we're trying to figure out where we are in space. Okay, and then we have one that's also vision. Now you can take those sensors, those sensors that we have here, so we have our somatic, which is touch, pressure, pain, temperature, and then we can take all of these and call these special senses. And so taste, smell, uh, hearing, vision, these are your your basic five senses. Well, it's four out of the five because touch is um, is a somatic sensor. Now we also need to talk about um, the properties of these particular sensors. And but what we're talking about here is what is their job? Well, their job is really straightforward. Their job is to convert whatever that stimulus is. So they're going to convert the external, this stimulus, and it may not be external to the body, it could be internal, and they convert that into nerve energy. And the idea here is, let's say that the sensor is activated by some external change, and that causes a signal to be sent down that neuron to the central nervous system. It can be a change where it's just a mechanical receptor where you've changed the shape of that nerve and it's caused um, an electrical change inside that cell and caused that cell to bring in ions and remove ions so that the signal travels down there. Now you have to understand that even though we have this conversion here and this nerve energy is sent to the central nervous system, there's a, a point where we get what's called adaptation. And adaptation is this conscious thought, understanding, sensation, declines as the stimulation continues. Um, the best example I can think of is you're holding someone's hand. You know, at first when you hold that girlfriend or boyfriend's hand, you're, uh, you've got it held and you're like, oh man, I'm holding their hand. You have this conscious understanding that that's what you're doing. You can feel it. After a while, you may lose that conscious sensation. You have adapted to that stimulus. The clothes on your back, we've said this before, but the clothes on your back, you probably feel them now, but prior to me saying that, you didn't really feel it. When you first put on the clothes in the morning, um, you feel the effects of those clothes on your body and so you have this conscious understanding that you've got clothes on but that adaptation not feeling that signal anymore occurs really quickly uh, when it's dealing with clothes okay so these are the different pieces that we need to kind of think about as we go through and look at receptor types stimulation types as um, we talk about the chemical senses, the special senses, vision, hearing, and those kind of things. That's all for this lecture. Thank you.